Hey guys, my name is Emily. This is my channel. This is my first video. Welcome. Um, today we're going to be talking about the first part to my Cinderella live action cosplay. It is a cosplay I've been wanting to do for quite some time now, just because it's the biggest, poofiest, sparkliest princess dress I could think of, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to make and it's going to be a lot of fun to wear. So today's video is going to be about making the first part of her dress. It's kind of the base of everything. It's the hoop skirt. So at first I wasn't sure what shape hoop skirt was going to be best, but everywhere I looked online, everyone agreed that an elliptical cage would be better than a circular cage, which is kind of the standard shape. Um, so that's what we're working with today. Totally not sponsored, but I went ahead and bought an elliptical cage crinoline pattern from Truly Victorian. I think it was about $13. The e-pattern was a little cheaper, but I really, really hate e-patterns because in a physical pattern, you get all of the stuff you need to cut out on this big piece of um, really thin paper that's easy to work with and pin and cut. And um, E patterns are actually formatted so that you print them out on multiple little sheets of printer paper and tape them all together. So I've got all the stuff I need today with me to make the actual hoop skirt. Uh, first and foremost, the most important thing being hoop wire. I actually looked really hard for um, like a good cheap middle ground wire I could use online and I couldn't really find anything that was heavier than a plastic boning but lighter than a super heavy metal boning so I actually settled on this hoop and bustle wire from Truly Victorian as well. It's 5.5 millimeters and I think it set me back $49. And this one actually was perfect because it came in a roll that was 26 meters and that's exactly the length that they recommend for the hoop skirt. So all in all really cheap for hoop wire that you know is going to be a good quality. I would definitely recommend this website if you're trying to make a hoop skirt because they've got a lot of historically accurate patterns and they just, the product is really good. So I would recommend them. The hoop wire also came with U-tips. I don't know if you can see that. They are for covering the blunt edge of the hoop wire so nothing gets caught or cut. I've also got with me today belting. Um, the pattern calls for three-fourths of an inch, but the only width I could find at my fabric store was one inch. So that's what we're working with. Along with that comes a parachute buckle, also one inch because it, the belting goes through it. Next up is bone casing. We also didn't really have bone casing at the fabric store, so i um, got double fold bias tape. It's also not the right width, but I think we're going to make it work. Hopefully. Got some ribbon for tying the hoops together, 7 eighths of an inch. An important distinction here is that they asked for grail grain ribbon, so that's what we got. We've got some thinner ribbon for, I think, the things that tie behind the legs on the hoop skirt, but that's something that we'll find out. And last but not least, we've got some muslin for the back at the bottom so that um, when you're walking, your feet don't get caught in between the hoops. <laughs> Pretty important, I think. Okay, so now we're going to get a little more into the process. I measured my sewing machine to make sure the line I was following was correct for the seam allowance I wanted, and then I started sewing the pieces of the bag together. Once I finished sewing all the pieces together, I went back and I zigzag stitched all the raw edges so they wouldn't fray. This is also to make sure that when I insert the hoop wire, it won't get caught on anything because the surface of the fabric will be nice and flat. Here's a close-up of those zigzag stitches. The next thing I did was sew the edges together lengthwise to create sort of a tube. And after that I just flipped it right side up.
The next thing I did was I just ironed the entire thing to make sure it was flat for the next step. That's my best friend Isabel, she wanted to be in the video, so here she is. It's kind of hard to see, but what I did next was sew the two ends together to make a one continuous loop, and I began to sew straight stitches on some lines I had marked earlier so that way when I put the hoop wire through it would have its own little channel. It looks like I forgot to film myself doing it, but essentially what I've done here is sewed one end of the belting to the buckle, and I hemmed the other end and I just cut it to size. Here's a close-up of the mess of stitching I had to do to get it not to fray. Next I cut out four layers of this semicircle shape and sewed along the edge. I then flipped it inside out and marked a bunch of lines with the seam allowance worth of space in between them. I sewed over all the lines I had just marked to give it stability. This little semicircle is for the bustle, which is at the back, and that holds everything up, so it's gotta be strong enough to hold a lot of weight. Here's a close-up of what that stitching looked like when I was done. To finish it off, I used an overlocking stitch along the top to keep it together and keep it from fraying. I then marked where I was going to attach all the ribbon according to the pattern. I also marked which ribbon will go where. Next I marked on the belting where I wanted the bustle to sit and I sewed it on. For this I just used a ton of zigzag stitches in the front and the back because it was really hard to get it on and get it to stay on without totally ruining the belting. Here's how it looked when it was all put together. It's worth noting that the buckle has to go on the side to reduce bulk. 